What about this? What's the name of this sort of? It's Mace. Okay, Mace, huh? Yeah, there's two of them. And actually they hook together if you want to carry them hooked together. But you use them one in one hand, one in the other. It's a silent killer. All you gotta do is hit somebody in the head once with that. That's it. It knocks them out, mm -hmm. pierces their skull, mm -hmm. and they bleed to death. 100%. <laughs> Without a shot fired. <laughs> <laughs> nice and clean, I guess. <laughs> Medieval times. <laughs> Tell me that wasn't brutal. Uh, what a brutal way to die. I'd rather be shot. <laughs> One of the reasons I actually came here was to make a video. I like to lost some conversation. Um, so, anyway. If you don't mind. Okay. Right. Hey guys, welcome back to Ready T Plus. So today I'm at a very cool uh, gun show here in Orange. I think it's called the Strat Stratford, Stratford Gun Club um, Gun Show. It's nighttime, as you can see, but uh, we're still here. We have 10 sub. It was drizzling a little bit, but I'm just going to walk through and show you guys a little bit of the things I've been looking at I just actually purchased a a range bag yeah rifle bag yeah bbt rifle bag I'm speaking to my buddy here just got it from me. nice to meet you anthony senor from city's gear from city's gear uh check them out i'll put a link in the, in the description but yeah nice rifle bags pretty cool i've been using this a lot at a range but in the meantime, I was going to walk through and show you guys a little bit of what's available. Hey guys, so I was just talking to uh, to Sean here a little bit about why ammo prices are so high. And he has some information for us. So Sean, you're saying something about the reason why ammo is so high. And the reason being is raw materials are high. Copper's high. Copper's mm. are about $3 a pound. And the brass cases are 70% copper. Mm. Um, lead is gone close to 50 cents a pound. Mm. So all those pieces are factors plus supply and demand of the materials and the supply chain, which mm -hmm. is a problem for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And then the high cost of primers. And that's been the case, what, since the pandemic or before that? Even before the pandemic. Mm. It used to be you could buy a box of primers for $35 a thousand. Mm -hmm. Now you can't touch it for less than over 100 Regardless of what state. Let's say I went matter. to Georgia. Mm -hmm. Yep. One of my suppliers is out west, mm -hmm. and they've got a two-year back order on primers alone. Two years? Two years. They won't even take orders right now. Wow. So you can't get it. So it's... it's so high. automatically, whatever you have is going to be... Yeah, because there's demand for it is mm -hmm. high. And that's part of the reason well, that ammo is okay. cost for cost. Right. Alright guys, so I was walking by and I saw this amazing spread here. They're closing up because the, the uh, show is about to end anytime soon. But I saw these amazing rifles here and I saw my buddy Anthony here. I was just curious, Anthony, so I noticed the sign says you guys manufacture or design? Right. We are a full shop. We do manufacturing, we build our own suppressors, full automatics, mm -hmm. everything from the Connecticut legal other than, yes. all the way to standard firearms and shipping them to other gun stores mm -hmm. in other states. So the suppressor, we don't do. 
for the suppressor, the time period for CT, how long is that sort of? So right now we have the electronic system, yeah. the new electronic system. One, you can't get rejected in the fingerprints because they're already accepted the moment you do it. Yeah. Sometimes it takes a little bit of work, but you don't get any rejection possibilities. Right. And so far it's been as fast as like six weeks, mm -hmm. as long as four months. So it's much faster than the traditional system where you have to go through the fingerprints at the law enforcement right. office and send it in and wait up to two years and then you can possibly get rejected. Right. Um, what Plus, else? it's digitally saved. Yeah. So if you want a second, you don't have to do it again. Uh, what's the, the actual process though? You come in, you say, I want a suppressor. You have to do your NFA approval tax stamp. You do your fingerprints, you submit it. It takes anywhere up to four months through the system. It comes back. Walk out with your suppressor. You said the NFL tax stamp? NFA. 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 National, National Firearms, Firearms Act. Yeah. The big guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's a $200 tax the government gets for. Yeah. Okay. It's not our, it's not our money. It's next. So you don't have to be a member of the NFA. No no no, 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 no. Okay. Just a regular thing. Yeah. It's not like the NRA where you have to... People think suppressors are illegal. They're not illegal. There's nothing that says you can't own an NFA item. An NFA item just says you have to go through the process to make sure that you're legitimate enough to own it and they register it to you. So it is a registered tax stamp that says, I can own a machine gun, I can own a suppressor, I just have to go through the paperwork and the process. So it's like a, a misconception then. It is. It is. Huh. We don't have... Uh, regular store workers at our shop. Our yes. shop is all mechanical engineers, chemical engineers. Yes. Everybody here is part of the team that makes, designs, builds the firearms. Right. So when you're coming into our store, you're getting something where you're not going to get it from a typical store. We build, mm -hmm. design the suit. We do a lot of the things that make sure you're within the law and compliant. Mm -hmm. This is just a standard Condor double barrel. It's an over and under shotgun. Very typical for skeet and trap. We had a customer coming who wanted custom made over and under shotgun dueling pistols. Yeah. So we turned them into handguns, mm -hmm. made holsters, and had custom dual wielding shotgun pistols. With eight and a half inch barrels. Wow. I wouldn't want to shoot them, but they look cool. Yeah, they were cool. <laughs> customer get with customer needs. I mean, that'll probably blow your arm on, no? Yeah, yeah, the the recoil. Light, light, light loads and it's fine. You'd lose, yeah, your wrist would take a hell of a yeah. beating. <laughs> uh, AK style, it is not an AK. AKs are tight band. This is yeah. not an AK. We have 92s. We have Galils. My favorite one, the Israeli. Israeli Galil. So this is Connecticut. That's legal. It's 100% legal in Connecticut. That is neither a rifle nor is it a pistol. It is an other than firearm. It just it looks not like... an AK. Right. So the charging is the same process? Mm -hmm. Okay. You would appear to be an AK, but it's actually not. Yeah, the internals are not AK. But the look of it and its basic... The design principles are AK. I'll give you an example. This is my favorite one, the Galil. Made Galil. in Israel. Mm. These things would be like if Rolls Royce made an AK, that's what this would be. Okay. They're just smooth as butter, man. Check that out. The Israelis can't screw around. Yeah, they, they don't play around. has got to shoot. So this is the drum. You can vary the lens size too, right? This, this, this is the AK design 12 gauge shot. So this is if you melded together a shotgun mm -hmm. and an AK, this is what you'd have. Now this one is specifically made and designed by a Connecticut resident mm -hmm. at Kalashnikov USA. It's 100% American made. And is the AK 12 gauge pistol. Jeez. And that stock extends. Because <laughs> it's made for Connecticut. Here in Bristol, Bristol, <laughs> mm -hmm. Like an AK. It's a rock out. It's not how you're supposed to do it, sir. Okay. Please demonstrate. Hell, it's just AK guys would be like, what are you doing? What's the right way? We're both ways. Well, you're supposed to take the magazine, the fresh mag, and you knock it out and put the new one in. So that's how you do that. Put the magazine. It's a rock lock. So you have to rock the front end and lock the back end. So guys, I'm learning a lot <laughs> unexpectedly. If you're if you're gonna be an AK guy, you gotta be an AK guy. You can't be halfway in between, man. So it's a AK style shotgun. Pistol. Pistol. It's converted into an other than. Converted into other than because of Connecticut laws and regulations. Mm -hmm. this, but this this and all these I got innuendos of a lot. Yeah, that's what we specialize in. That's why we have our jobs. 
I hear you. And that is 10 rounds. That is the legal maximum. Front end first. Front end first. That's right. All the way. There, now rocking it. There you go. Uh, there. Yeah, that, that, that would take some getting used to for me. Yeah. Stick with AR. We do have ARs in 12 gauge. Yeah. Yep, it takes a little bit to make it. I like the sound. Well, it's because it's an AK. <laughs> In fact, if you listen to this, I'm not that tight. Well, we have to imagine that here in Connecticut because you can't go full auto. auto. Actually, we have four of those that are shot, and uh, we are building a range, so you will be able to come to our range and shoot full auto. Also, probably within a year. I mean, okay. it's going to take time. Yeah. Okay. We do a lot of full auto. Yeah. Yeah. You said the water range? In the town of water barriers. Yeah, we're definitely going to. You're going to see me. <laughs> I hope so. Appreciate it. Thanks for the info. Appreciate your time. So there you have it, guys. Loads of information here. You never know what you're going to learn here on Reggie T Plus. Thank you for watching. And until the next one, keep moving, my friends. Peace.